Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm really, really excited today. Got something brand new. Well, it's actually a very old format from the channel that I'm really excited to bring back, which is my draw along anatomy format. Now I did this before using Sharpies on cartridge paper, modernized a little bit since then. And this is a series that I've been really, really looking forward to bringing back. Cause I love anatomy. I love teaching anatomy and trying to make it as simple as possible for students. So just before we get started, this is one of those videos where I really, really need your feedback to help kind of shape this series. It's something that I really want to take forward. But if there are things about the way I'm doing this that work, things that don't work, uh, particular topics that you'd like to see me cover. And as always, my name is Ollie. I'm a junior doctor working in the NHS in the northeast of England. So let's get started. Today we are going to be talking about two things, the inguinal ligament and Hesselbach's or the inguinal triangle. And please join along with me as we go. We are going to be drawing together as we go through. So we're going to start just by doing a very, very crude outline of a pelvis. Just going to add in our obturator frame and down here come up doesn't have to be anything special, but just to where our, our acetabulum is, where our femoral head would sit, put in our obturator frame in there, and we're just going to outline the pubic tubercle, which is this little space here. I'm just going to give myself four points, and I'm just going to outline this a little bit because this is our ACIS, our anterior superior iliac spine. One of the really high points on the pelvis, it's the anterior most part of the top of the pelvis and you can feel it very easily on yourself. So to find it, all we're gonna do is take a hand, whichever one you like, place it on your hip, and then you're gonna bring your fingers inwards very slowly like this. And if you hand on hip, fingers inwards, they will close and you'll be able to feel with your distal fingers, your anterior superior iliac spine. And as is good practice, I'm just going to pop some labels on here so we can remain oriented. We've got our obturator foramen right here, and we've got our acetabulum here. Now we don't strictly need all of these labels, but I think it's good just to keep refreshing ourselves as we go. So it's at this point that we're going to draw on our inguinal ligament, which as we've said runs from the acis, the anterior superior iliac or the ac spine, and it runs from there to the pubic tubercle, this sort of raised nodular area of the pubic bone. And I'm just going to fill it in for no other reason than it's satisfying to do so. And for good measure we will throw on a label. So we have there our inguinal ligament. So what actually is the inguinal ligament? Why do we care about it? Well first and foremost it forms the base of the inguinal canal which is one of the classic anatomy structures that you have to learn in medical school. It's got a lot of important clinical correlates. It's formed from the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscles. And just again, if you're ever faced with a sort of spotter uh, question to it that comes up in your anatomy exams, it's got some important structures that run deep immediately to the inguinal ligament. Now I'm just going to change my colour very quickly here because we've got three muscles that lie deep to it, which are psoas major, iliacus and pectineus. Then very importantly, we've got our femoral bundle, so the femoral nerve, artery and vein. And then lastly, a more obscure, but sometimes clinically important one, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, which is the nerve that's classically implicated in neuralgia paresthetica, this sort of strange uh, pain on the lateral thigh, or as I was taught it in medical school, Calvin Klein syndrome, from people wearing underwear or jeans that are too tight. Now, before we move on to talking about Hesselbach's triangle, there's one really important distinction that we need to make, and that is the distinction between the midpoint of the inguinal ligament and the mid-inguinal point. And I'm going to need my grey back just for a sec because we need our pubic tubercle and pelvis on the other side. So crucially, the midpoint of the inguinal ligament is halfway between our acis, which we said was here, and the pubic tubercle. So if we were to draw it on, it would be about here. And this point is really important because this is where the femoral nerve passes. 
So if you were to try and do a femoral nerve block for the lower limb, this is where you would look, halfway between the acis and the pubic tubercle. The mid-inguinal point, however, although I know it sounds really confusingly the same, is instead halfway between the acis and the pubic symphysis. And I know that these lines look really, really close, but they're not actually the same. If we were to try and draw the halfway line, it would be about here. And the mid-inguinal point is instead of the femoral nerve, we will find the femoral artery. It'll be pulsatile, you can maybe feel it on yourself if you press deeply enough, because if someone's really shut down and we're going for a femoral stab to try and get a blood sample, that's the site where we're going to look for it. So let's just make a note of that up here before we move on. The midpoint of the inguinal ligament is halfway from the acis to the pubic tubercle and we'll find the femoral nerve. Whereas the mid-inguinal point is halfway from the acis to the pubic symphysis. And instead we will find our femoral artery. So now that means that it is time to move on to Hesselbach's triangle, or as it's sometimes known, the inguinal triangle. So the reason why this area is important anatomically is that in the case of a direct inguinal hernia, and we need to talk separately about inguinal hernias, but Hesselbach's triangle is the space into which or through which a direct inguinal hernia will protrude. You can think of it like a relative area of weakness in the abdominal wall. We're going to need those two points again, so I'm going to draw on my basis up here, and just so we've got a point of reference, I'm going to draw on my pubic tubercle down here here. So we've got our PT and our ACIS because we're going to need the inguinal ligament again. So let's just draw on our ligament again. So as I'm sure you will remember, any triangle has three sides. It has three borders. In this case we have a medial border towards the inside of the body, a lateral border towards the outside, and an inferior border, the one that comes along the bottom. Now luckily for us, we already know what the inferior border is. It's the inguinal ligament and it's nice and set up for us. Now the medial border of our triangle is rectus abdominis. This is what people know as your abs. It's a paired muscle, so you have one on either side of your abdomen. So inferiorly it connects to all of these structures down here, your pubic tubercle, your pubic symphysis and the pubic crest. It connects to your xiphoid process, the hook-like part at the bottom of your sternum, and the costal cartilage of ribs 5 to 7. So the central part of the ribs here comes downwards to join the pubic bone. And just for the sake of completeness, we could actually add our linear alba or white line to you and me. And if you imagine the, the little dip in the middle of someone's abs, who's say a bodybuilder, this avascular area that separates the two partnered rectus abdominis muscles, this line is called the linear alba. But Ollie, I'm sure you're very wisely asking yourselves, a triangle has three sides. We agreed this before. What's going on? Well, we can add our final part in, which comes in the form of the inferior epigastric vessels. And that nicely closes off our triangle. So I've drawn them in blue here just so it's easier to appreciate, but they arise from the external iliacs. So we have an artery and a vein, the inferior epigastric artery and vein, which arise from the external iliacs down at the bottom and will go on superiorly to connect to the superior epigastric vessels. Anatomy is so easy. In fact, just for the sake of completeness, because I'm nice, we'll add in an artery as well. So again, maybe for your notes, I'm a big believer in simple diagrammatic representations. So we have here rectus abdominis, down at the bottom we have the inguinal ligament and then coming upwards we have the epigastric vessels. I find that these little schematic diagrams when you're frantically revising for exams can be as good as anything. So why is Hesselbach's triangle important? Why is it worth knowing about? Well, clinically it's because this is the area in which a direct inguinal hernia likes to appear because it's a relative point of weakness in the abdominal wall. Crucially, a direct inguinal hernia will arise medially 
to the inferior epigastric vessels, this lateral border of the triangle. And there's another structure that we need to know about in here, which is the superficial inguinal ring. So I'm going to mark that with an S. And this structure lies one centimeter superolaterally to the pubic tubercle. We'll talk more about the deep and superficial inguinal rings in a video on the inguinal canal, but it's just to make you aware that because direct hernias protrude through within Hesselbach's triangle, they can push and come out of the superficial ring as well, although they will not ultimately progress because they haven't come through the inguinal canal, they've simply pushed through the back of it. And direct hernias make up about 20%, they're the less common variety of inguinal hernias. If, however, your inguinal hernia were to arise laterally to the inferior epigastric vessels, then you have an indirect inguinal hernia, and this accounts for about 80% of cases. So that is Hesselbach's triangle, guys. Just to recap, we have our three borders. The medial border is the lateral border, here in green, of rectus abdominis. The inferior border is our inguinal ligament going between the pubic tubercle and the anterior superior iliac spine and then our lateral border of the triangle is the course of the inferior epigastric vessels obviously these are on the inside you can't identify them until you've got the person open and you're doing surgery but that is what i think you need to know so very quickly on screen now are going to be high yield examination questions it'll only run for a few seconds so let the questions show up challenge yourself and the answers will reveal themselves momentarily Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed a return to format. If you've got topics that you would like to see, anything you want to see covered, let me know in this format. If there are things that you like, things that you don't like, let me know in the comments. I'm really excited to be bringing this back and really excited with things that we can make. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time.